Hi there, and welcome to a really fun episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. I get to talk with Pam Fields, who is a virtual friend up until now. This is the first time we get to talk face-to-face on Zoom, and so I'm really excited because I've really been wanting to bring her on and just have her talk a little bit about just the role that prayer has played in her parenting. Um, She blogs at Tending Fields. Is it Tending Fields, the name of your blog? Dot net. Yeah, but it's dot net. Yeah. Yes, tendingfields.net. And she's posted some really cool prayer tips, and she's posted some great um, blog posts that we've shared in Praying Christian Women. So thank you for being on the podcast, Pam. I'm really excited to be here. It's um, a new world and I'm learning along the way, but it's kind of fun to when the Lord brings something new in to jump in. Well, and I just felt like our connection was kind of like a divine appointment. I, I figured there, there are just a lot of parallels in what we're doing and I'm just really excited mm-hmm. to have you share. And I think this time, so as of the time of our recording, it's about mid-April. So we're like over a month into this COVID craziness. And I think a lot of what you have done all along in terms of prayer and homeschooling and and all of the different ways that you've incorporated those things together, I think some of that's really going to be encouraging for some of our reluctant homeschooling moms there that just got school, you know, schooling at home thrown in their lap. So I think this is going to be a really cool episode. Um, So we always like to start our conversations with our just for fun question, which we've kept the same for a while because it's fun to hear the different answers. So Pam, tell us what your favorite prayer closet is. I had not really thought about it as a prayer closet until I started listening to your podcast. Oh, that's fun. Isn't that funny? And, and then I, one day I kind of looked around myself where I was and I went, this is my prayer closet. So it's my shower, my shower stall. And, um, so anyway, I think because I am a homeschool mom and I've got people around me all the time and it seems like there's a lot of interruptions in life, um, I really enjoy my time in the shower. And so one of the things I've done is uh, I've laminated a lot of Bible verses or one thing I was looking at this week was I have a like description of each of the, in Ephesians 6, each of the uh, armor, each of the pieces of armor. And so I have like prayer prompts in my shower. And so when I'm in there and I just you know, can really focus and not have the interruptions. It's a great place for me to talk to God. I love that. And I think so many of our moms right now that are at home, whether they're working from home and have kids or they're, you know, they've got kids at home where they didn't have them before. um, I think that can be a real escape. I find myself, my kids, I homeschooled for a couple of years, um, one of my kids and I've got three now, and all three of them are in public school. So I've gotten used to them being at school during the day. My husband is now home. So, and I'm an introvert. So I have people, people, I won't say overload. I have loved it. But when I need to get alone, that's like the one place I go is the shower. And it's either that or the car. And I'm not going anywhere very much. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's a really, I loved that. And I loved your printables. So do you rotate those over time, those verses that you have laminated in the shower? I do. I just kind of, um, when there's something, especially that I feel like our family needs to focus on maybe a character issue, or maybe there's something coming up an event or something that just happened, I'll change out the the verse. And I have a little home laminator. It's super simple. And uh, they're like 25 bucks and you can get them on all over the place. So, so it's worth that little investment of those laminated sheets to, to put things in. And I don't just do it in my own shower. Actually, I laminate stuff and put them in the showers that my family uses that my kids use. And it's so funny that sometimes they can just rattle off scripture. And I had forgotten that I had printed and oh. laminated those verses. And they've even asked me sometimes uh, for like youth group and things, there's certain goals to have things memorized by certain dates. And they're just going through, they're like, have you laminated my next set of verses yet? I need to have those in the shower. So we have well water, which must, you know, that kind of helps that we can take long showers. 
Right. Well, how do you attach them? I forget how you had attached. Was it Velcro? No. If you laminate them, they simply stick. The oh. moisture, yeah, the moisture in the shower, just you just stick them to the wall, get it wet and stick it to the wall. And so. it, does it ever fall down and you just have to replace it? I mean, do they kind of fall or have they pretty much stayed? Oh, I've had some that have been up there for a year or more. So they pretty much stick. The other thing that I have found works in there is, uh, you know, those foam craft sheets and you can yes. write on them with permanent markers. I have done those, but I found out the hard way that you only want to use white because so you can write on those and they mm -hmm. stick with the moisture, but you want to use white because one year I put a bunch of Christmas verses in red and green up on the shower walls. And when they finally came down, I had squares all over my shower that did not wash off. It took like a year for the color to come off of the walls in the shower. So yeah, white foam board works or else laminating uh, the paper. Yeah. Works that great. is great. I'm so excited. So I had planned on doing this and I realized I don't have a way to laminate, but I think I'm going to get one. I used to have one when I worked in children's ministry at our last church. I had a personal laminator and I think I gave it to someone and I, it really is a useful tool and they're not that expensive. Yeah. And right now, actually with everybody with their children at home and doing the school, it's nice to laminate like your math facts or whatever. And then you can use a dry erase marker and write on them and wipe off with a, a dry erase. And that sure saves a lot of time going and printing and reprinting. And so that's another idea. That's great. We could make this whole episode about homeschool <laughs> tips right now. And I think people would love it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. We well, could. so tell us a little bit about your family and about your just if you're, I don't know if you're comfortable sharing on the air about your family and you don't need to name names, but where you're at with kids ages and school and things and yeah. Sure. So yeah, my family's starting to get used to this that I'm Good. telling about them. So <laughs> it's been kind of a fun, fun uh, road. So our oldest is almost 24 and then I have a daughter who is 22 and she actually lives not far from you. I mean, she's on an island in Alaska. Her husband's in the Coast Guard, and they have two, and they're expecting their third oh. baby. So I'm a grandma. And then my twins, uh, I, they're 20, and I have one of them's in the Army. He's deployed right now. And then the other one is in college. Let's see. That leaves five at home, and those are 16, 13, 11 nine and we'll be seven at the end of the week. So I'm wow. kind of moving. Yeah. I'm kind of moving on to a new stage um, of life being a grandma now. And, and my baby is first grade. So it, it's a new, a new stage in life. We've been married for 25 years and um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of our family. Yeah. I just, in the last, I don't know, maybe a year or so. I have my daughter is six. My youngest is now just turned six in mm -hmm. September. Well, just, and, uh, I got, I came to the realization that I'm not a little kid mom anymore. And you know, there are no more diapers. There's no more like preschooly stuff. And that was, you know, and for you having older ones, my oldest is 14, but for you having been a mom of little kids for more years than that, I can't, it's a, challenge in a way and it's a relief in some ways and it's sad but it's exciting <laughs> there's yeah yeah I, I it's funny because my transition was like I became a grandma when my baby was three and a half so wow. it's get, been a really natural transition and so like if when I'm going through things and I have little play preschool games or preschool stuff, I'll ask my daughter, do you want this? I can send it to you and it'll just move right down from my littlest to her oldest. And so that's been kind of fun, that but is it fun. is, it, it's kind of like there's a stage in life too, where you go, okay, I've been doing this for this many years. What am I supposed to be doing now? Like what's yeah. the next step? And, um, learning, to uh, learning to rest has been a big thing for me because I've had to be so vigilant to have my eye on everybody. Yeah. So for me to realize that I can step away now a little bit and not have to be quite hands-on um, 
it's, it's a new thing that I'm learning. Yeah. Well, that's a good segue into my next question, which is how did you get into blogging? What was your story of how you started writing down some of the things you've been experiencing for all these years? And when did that happen? It's still pretty new. So, <laughs> but, um, so I ran our local homeschool support group for 10 years and I also ran a mothering retreat, like a non-denominational bring some moms together. And, and we did brought in a speaker and had a mothering retreat. And so through those contacts and doing a little bit of speaking here and there to those mom groups, I had a lot of people come up to me afterwards and, and say, well, I really liked what you said. Um, can I follow your blog or where do you, where do you this or that? And I seriously had no idea what it was, where to get started or anything about it. But then I really felt like the Lord was just um, telling me it's time to move from specific homeschool ministry into just connecting with moms and encouraging moms because homeschooling is a portion of motherhood, but it's a small portion of it. And even right now, as everybody's homeschooling, the actual academics is a pretty small portion. The, a lot more of the, the thrust of it is our lifestyle and our parenting moments and mm -hmm. character development. And so um, as I felt like the Lord was just saying, it's time for you to retire from homeschool leadership. I really didn't know what I should be doing, but I Googled what is a blog. And so uh, I did that. And it's been about a little over a year, maybe a year and a half that uh, I started doing a blog. And so then I had to learn how to do Instagram beyond stalking my daughter and my grandchildren. <laughs> and, and yeah, so anyway, I'm learning along the way. Well, so am I. I we just, I mean, Praying Christian Women just started Instagram within the last year, and I had to Google about Instagram because, I, you know, I am not a tech person. I, I've been on Facebook for myself, you know, for a while, for what ten years or so, but never really learned how to do it. So there are some elements. It's just interesting now that when God calls you to some kind of speaking or ministry or anything like that, there is this whole world that opens up that we do have to kind of learn to navigate. So I love that. I love your story of that you Googled what is a blog. That's the perfect beginning for yeah. an <laughs> online career. I love it. Um, yeah. So what I also wanted to ask you, so there were several as you've been, so what is Tending Fields? Talk about what, what your blog focuses on. What did you end up having as your focus? Well, yeah, it was funny because in my mind, I thought, well, I'm probably supposed to go online and talk about homeschooling, but I just kind of started writing from my heart from just the Lord putting things on my heart. And when I went back and looked at it, I have very little about homeschooling. It's a lot more, of, there's a little, but it's a lot more about the life of a mom and um, encouraging moms where they are and trying to see Jesus in very incorporated into daily life and like lessons I can learn. The other thing that I see as I go back and I look at the posts I've done is I seem to always use this. Um, I knew I needed a plan. This wasn't going so well and this wasn't going so well. So I knew I needed a plan. And so <laughs> I, I realized I'm a pretty tangible person that um, when there's issues in our family or in my life, I need to have a real tangible something to put in front of me so that I remember to grow or am, am focused. I get too distracted. So it is kind of funny to think about what I thought I might be doing with that blog and then what actually has become of it um, and um, encouraging them for some of the, the, real, um, nor, the real normal parts of motherhood. Yeah, I love the way that happens where, you know, you think you've got one thing in mind and God just kind of takes you through your writing or through what you're doing and, and just kind of guides you and directs you in these different paths. I know one of your posts, I believe it was a blog post, was about the way that you remember to pray for your children. Can you talk about that? That was one of my favorite tips that you've had that I shared on the, on the Praying Christian Women page. 
Yeah, that was the very first uh, blog post that I did. Was it? And it was. And the reason that I did it is because I, I really didn't know what else I would, I didn't know what to write, but I had written a little article for a little mommy magazine. And when, when my article got printed, I had uh, the gal who, who edited it, she put my email address in it. And so I started get, getting feedback from these ladies and they were like, wow, that really helped. That was a real practical, tangible uh, tip. And I'm going to be using that with my family. And so I thought, well, I'm not quite sure what to write, but if I write that and share that, hopefully that will connect with some ladies and give them a real um, focus on a way to pray. And so, so what that was is that I was at a women's retreat and the speaker was talking about prayer and she had given all these examples in scripture about prayer, all these Bible verses. There's hundreds and hundreds of Bible verses about prayer. And she was asking us if we believe in the power of prayer. And and as much as I, I kind of had to introspectively, you know, I had to look at myself and go, well, I believe it. I totally believe in the power of prayer. But if I totally believe it, am I actively pursuing a prayer life specifically for my children and as mom it's my responsibility to pray for my children and to bring them before the lord and i i just realized i was not doing that regularly at all like completely at all it was just um but i knew i wanted to make a change and i knew i wanted to find a way to remind myself to pray um in the same weekend at this retreat, she was talking about the breastplate and the priesthood, Aaron, I'm trying to remember exactly the, um, I tried to write down the scripture so I could tell you, but um, see if it comes to my mind. The, the passage is in Exodus 28, 29. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breastplate of judgment on his heart when he goes into the holy place to bring them to regular remembrance before the Lord. So Aaron had all the tribes, you know, on this breastplate. And he, when he walked in, he had their names with him as he walked in, in regular remembrance before the Lord. And so mm. I, I was thinking, I'm, I'm not much of a jewelry person, but I was thinking I need to have something on my body that reminds me to pray for my children. And so I came up with the idea of just getting stretchy string at Walmart and then those little alphabet beads mm -hmm. that, uh, and I strung the name of my children onto these stretchy alphabet beads. And I start out the day with them on my left wrist. And then as I pray for each one of them, I can move it on to my right wrist. Because being a mom of a lot of children, I found that I would start at the oldest end and start praying chronologically down. And then sometimes I'd think, well, I didn't make it all through my list. So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. And inevitably, the, the guy in the middle would get forgotten. Right. You know, I get too distracted. He he also happened to be my quietest one. So, Aww. you know, I just would forget sometimes. So, so by moving them from my right wrist to my left wrist, I would regularly remember to pray for them every day. And um, if I, if I realize, I mean, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I get up in the morning because I do have a large family. We have nine if you weren't counting earlier. So <laughs> if we, um, so I get up in the morning, I'd have all these bracelets on my wrist and sometimes, and then as I'd finish, sometimes I'd take them off and put them on the bathroom counter or something so that um, I didn't just have them on all day long. So sometimes I would look at my wrist and I'd think, I, I, I want to go get something done. I want to take these off. I've got real work to get done. Mm -hmm. And then I would really have to remember my real work is covering my children in prayer. And it is um, the spiritual development of, our, of my children and bringing them before the Lord. That is actually where the real work in mothering is much more so than my dishes or laundry or any of that other stuff. 
Oh, and that is, it's invisible work, but it's so important. And I think we just forget because it's invisible because it's not tangible, but by putting them on your wrist, it makes it tangible. And right. Yeah. Oh, I love that. But I also love that point about just, I think all of us every day, I mean, need to come to terms with, do I believe in the power of prayer? Because it, you know, prayer could be something we do. Yeah, sure. I know I need to pray. I need to check it off the list. But I think when we get to that question and we look into our heart, when we check ourselves, when we have that mentality of, oh, I don't have time for this. I need to do real work. You know, that just, it tells that we revert back to our human flesh uh, default. And, and I think it's, it's kind of a constant job writing ourselves, you know, getting us back into that right frame of mind or at times, like when you kind of came to the, the realization, oh, I, I've really not done this at all. I need, do I really believe in the power of prayer? I think we come to those points at different times in our lives. I know I do on a regular basis. I'll just realize I've spent, you know, every day, Alana and I have gotten on and, and done a, a COVID conversation about prayer. And when's the last time other than on the podcast that I sat down and prayed? Because we do, we get in this works mentality and this check, to, check off the to-do list. And so, yeah, I think when we get into that, like, do I believe in the power of prayer? Do I believe that this invisible work is changing the fabric of reality in real life? Is it really doing that? Then I think it, powerful things come out of that. So I love that idea. I'm actually, I'm, I'm itching to go order on Amazon if they have it <laughs> or put in an order for pickup for the grocery store the next time I go to get the beads because I love that idea. Well, uh, you'll have to send me the name of, names of your kiddos and I could probably pull from my stash and hook you up with some, <laughs> some okay. bracelets. <laughs> uh, we'll have to talk afterwards. That's really neat. Yeah, there that we go. Cool. Well, so recently you told me about kind of a side project that's that you've been working on or maybe an extension of your ministry which is encouragement for moms during this covid quarantine culture that we're experiencing can you talk about what you're doing and i i would love to hear about that yeah so you know it is interesting as like the lord puts one thing in front of you and then you you chase after it and you follow it and you, and then he goes and now here's something new mm -hmm. and here's something new and it's just it's kind of an adventure right so uh we we have been homeschooling for 19 years so there's a lot of things that i've learned along the way a lot by trial and error of course um but a lot of years of of living this lifestyle of having everybody home all the time and I'm in a lot of homeschool groups and have been in through the years. And when the whole COVID thing hit and all these announcements were coming in about everybody was going to be educationally displaced, basically, and staying at home to do their academics, I thought, you know, we don't know what's coming down the pike from the schools as far as academics or what they're going to be doing to connect with their students. But I can tell you from experience that this is going to be a major lifestyle shift for moms. It's going to be a huge thing to learn to navigate, number one, the messes. I mean, <laughs> you probably realized your house is a lot messier, right? And <laughs> the constant desire for snacks, because since I'm here and there's the refrigerator, why not? You know, <laughs> so... Um, I started thinking about some of those lifestyle things, and I was thinking that we have a lot of resources in the homeschool community, but the moms that are in the public and private school realms, I wondered if they're getting those connections and they're getting that support for such a new and extreme lifestyle that they had no notice and no preparation for. So I started a Facebook group. And my, my hope and, and goal was that I could just connect moms of all sorts of educational models to support each other and encourage each other. And I'm trying to look at different aspects of, of the lifestyle that we have now. Um, and this is just a, a jumping off point. I hope this group goes for many years to come. And it's kind of neat because... Moms are there sharing their hearts 
and there's there's some good connections going on. And so what is your group called? Is it a private group or is it an open public group? Okay, so it's a private group because you have to ask to join. Right. Okay. And there are a few questions, uh, like a gateway questions just to keep out spamming, right? Mm -hmm. So it is called Less Than Perfect Christian Mamas. Okay. So, yeah. Well, you I should be able to type it into the search bar. It should come up, le uh, Less Than Perfect Christian Mamas. Okay. And we'll link to that in our description too, so people can know where to go. That is exciting. And I just think that you're right. That is so beneficial because I don't think, you know, I have the benefit of having homeschooled before, having been a homeschool mom before. And so I do have some of those resources or people that I've talked to. I have a lot of homeschooling friends, so I, I can get tips and help. But I think there are a lot of just general things that you don't even think are common issues that you think maybe oh, my, my house is the only one dealing with this and you come to find out everybody's dealing with it. And there's so much freedom in that. And just even, even if it doesn't get resolved immediately, just knowing that other people, oh yeah, I deal with this too, is so comforting and, and takes a little bit of the burden off. So I know when I was homeschooling, I thought I was the only one that had guilt feeling like I wasn't doing it well or like I wasn't doing a good enough job or worried that my kid wasn't getting everything they needed. And then I'd talk to other homeschool moms and they're like, we all feel that way. <laughs> we, it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. We all have the same thing. And so I think that same thing can translate for these moms that it's not homeschooling in the sense of you're teaching them but you are managing their schedules depending and, and you are helping them with their work a lot of the times. And so I think there's, there are a lot of commonalities. So I am excited for that group. And did you also say that there was a prayer component? Cause I, was that through the Facebook group that you have this prayer component? Is it like a Facebook live that you do within the group or? So it, what I've got tried to do is to, because I tend to get highly distracted and I would go to all sorts of subjects and I completely forget other ones. I've tried to set a schedule of certain things that we look at each day. And so on Thursdays, I am focusing on prayer and Bible and encouraging moms to share their prayer requests. And then we can be praying for each other throughout the week and um, sharing so anyway, that's where it started is I have a day set aside to kind of focus on that. And then throughout the weeks, we can pray for one another. So I think that answers it. Yeah, I love that. Okay. <laughs> so can you just outline real quick kind of what your, what does your plan look like? Because within this group, you do have a focus. And so is the idea that you're, you're kind of giving moms a framework for their week? Is that kind of what you're what you're doing or where you, or is it just the focus of the group for that day? It's more of the focus for the group for that okay. day because so, everybody is so different how they're yeah. going to have a framework for their day. And yeah. myself, I'm really, I'm not an hour by hour scheduler. Right. I do more objective based. Like here's a chunk of things I want to get done today on a list. Here's a chunk for each one of my children. Mm -hmm. And really it doesn't matter to me what order it happens in as long as it's done by the end of the day. So knowing that everybody's situations are so different, I'm not really attempting to put any sort of scheduling together or form for anyone else's day. But to be a sounding board might be maybe how I might want to put that is maybe be a sounding board that any day, if you have any issues that are hot on your mind, that are troubling you, that you're confused about, you would have a place that you can post that and then other moms can surround you and pray for you and share resources to point you in some direction to help you out. But the reason why I did like meals on Monday and tips for the house on, on Tuesday and building relationships on Wednesday, you know, like, and then prayer on Thursday is because I personally would get distracted and I may decide I'm going to talk about meals every single day. And then I realized for three weeks that this group wasn't about just meals. It was supposed <laughs> to be about a broader, um, a broader sense of 
just motherhood. And, and can we agree that motherhood is huge? It's like, you're the doctor, you're the cook, you're the, I teach, obviously teacher right now. There's, mm -hmm. it's so huge. And there's so many little aspects. And, and it's funny, even dividing a focus on each day is kind of funny, because does our meal planning overlap with our household or our household overlap with our organization? It's like so intertwined, right? Yeah. But hopefully um, we can have a well-rounded run at the things that come on. And sometimes we don't realize what we're struggling with, what's frustrating us or what we need to refine until we see it. And somebody mentions it and, and then you go, Oh yeah, that's, I was kind of working through that too. So. Yeah. And again, you have the, just the power of community and I won't call it commiserate commiseration because it's not like we're miserable, but just the power of sharing struggles and realizing that, that there really is no struggle. That's, that's totally unique. Ever, someone out there is struggling with something similar and can either help you with their past solutions or tips for that struggle or at, at the, and I won't even say at the very least, or even more importantly, pray for you. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and I come alongside you. Yeah. I think sometimes what do we hear? Misery loves company, right? right. But really misery loves encouragement right? Mm -hmm. Misery, if you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, you don't need somebody to build that up. Mm -hmm. We need to have a, self, a, a mind that is alert and self-control and that focuses us back to what's important, focuses us back to the word of God and, and focuses us back to where our strength is coming from. And that's, that's what I really hope to build is a community that understands like, yeah, this stinks, or this is really hard, or I'm really struggling here. But let's, I will pray for you. And, and I will help you find an answer if I can. But I'm, I'm going to point you to truth, because mm -hmm. right now we're hit by a lot of things that aren't truth, and we don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. So let's point each other and encourage one another in the Lord. Yeah, I love it. So that is, say it again, say the group name for anyone to go right now and join or request sure. membership. Less, less than perfect Christian mamas. Okay. And M-A-M-A-S. Yes. Okay. Less than perfect Christian mamas. Um, and then again, they can find you at tendingfields.net. Correct. That's All us. All right. Well, that is so great. This has been so much fun and I am really looking forward to see what God does with this Facebook group. I feel like it's just so needed and I'm excited to jump in myself and be part of it because I know we can all use that. So for sure. how can we pray for you, Pam? What are some things, personal, blogging work, ministry, mm -hmm. all of that? What are, what are some things we can close in prayer for? Yeah, I... I just love connecting women and I love hearing their stories. And so I, I think maybe just that I will be sensitive to hear the Lord as, as he puts people on my heart and helps me connect people where the need is. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, I, our family, I, I feel pretty good about things going on and we're not, displaced or having to, you know, my husband's still working. And so my life in the day to day looks very much like what it used to, mm -hmm. but, um, but bring on this new aspect of this new group and um, the blog. And I'm just really um, hoping to hear the Lord direct me and, and I'm excited to run with him into the next step. That's great. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. And I'm just going to close in prayer before we sign off. All right. God, we just come before you just so thankful for community. Just we thank you that you didn't create us to live in a vacuum just as individuals, that you've given us the blessing of fellowship and encouragement. And even in this time of extreme isolation, you've given us the blessing of technology, as much as it can irritate us and aggravate us, it is 
a, a huge blessing right now that we can be connected with other people and in, as moms that we can be connected with other Christian moms that can encourage us and, and that we can encourage. I just lift up Pam to you today, Lord, and thank you for her willingness to listen to your call and, and to just remain flexible as you call her into new things. And we just pray your blessing over her home and her marriage and her family and her job as teacher, blogger, writer, encourager. Um, we just thank you that, that what, what you have called her to, you've already equipped her to move forward with. And we just pray for time management and just that constant balance between work and family and, uh, and doing, doing this ministry that you have called her to help her to balance that. Well, I just pray for, um, just for complete order and just for all of the other voices to quiet that your voice would, would be at the forefront of her mind, that she would hear you clearly, that she would recognize what is you calling her to specific tasks at what times and that there would be no frustration and no confusion in any of that. We pray that you would bring women to this group. God, we just ask that you would get it out there and that women would come and that, that you would give Pam the words and, and give the women that are part of this group just this gravity that would draw others in and, and this comfort and peace and encouragement that would just glorify you and further your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.